So let's talk about shoulder holsters. Obviously, these were really popular with police in the 80s and before then too, and may even be used now. They are a little bit problematic though. Uh, people don't really think it through when they say, I wanna, I wanna look like a you know, 1980s vice cop. Um, there's a couple issues with shoulder holsters in general. And uh, it kind of prevents you from training with them in any meaningful way. Uh, the, the biggest issue is a safety issue, and that's that you're, even if it's pointed down, because you can get versions that point down, but you're essentially flagging everybody, right? This is a loaded gun. I know you're flagging your own uh, junk when you uh, sit down with like an appendix or whatever, but this is, you're flagging other people. So without this jacket on, you can see straight down the barrel, and that kind of freaks people out. It is in the holster. It's safe, presumably, but... Uh, it kind of skews people out usually um, and essentially no flat range will let you shoot from a shoulder holster for that reason. Uh, you're, you're doing a 180, a complete 180 of a muzzle direction and uh, people don't like that. The other safety issue is that you tend to flag your arm, uh, your left arm when you draw. So the way I avoid doing that is I just lift my arm up. So you can either do uh, like a defensive kind of posture or you can just draw and then um, basically scoop it under your arm instead of flagging your own arm. Definitely don't want to flag your own arm uh, because accidents happen you know when you're going in and out of the holster. Uh, going, going back into the holster it's just the reverse. It's actually a little easier, a little safer because um, you got your arm out of the way sweeping a cover garment out of the way. So you just shove it right back in and close her up. So that the that's the biggest thing. You, you can't really go to any range and uh, draw from your holster. A lot of ranges don't allow you to draw from your holster anyway, but uh, the shoulder holster pretty much nowhere will allow you to do that. Uh, unless you have a nice piece of private property like this, you can't practice with your carry gun. So that sucks. This particular one is not very concealable because uh, the 1006 is a gigantically massive gun. And also, this is a Ted Blocker holster used in uh, season one of Miami Vice. Uh, same guy made the holster for Miami Vice, so that's kind of cool. Not a cheap piece of kit. It's probably about 350 bucks. Um, really nice, obviously, handmade leather. Um, so they're not cheap. The, even the Galco ones are a couple hundred bucks. At the end of the day, they're not all that concealable. And I think that's why Don Johnson requested that he get a different holster in other seasons. Because, I mean, this is, it looks like I have a, a cone tit, basically, on my left side. It's not concealable at all, unless I have a big hoodie or something to put over it. Um, and Don Johnson's not going to be wearing a hoodie. So, um... That's pretty much it about shoulder holsters. They are very comfortable. It's a comfortable way to carry a, uh, a large handgun, especially. I mean, you could carry a Desert Eagle this way. It'd be pretty comfortable. And on top of that, um, yeah, if you're gonna be in a situation where you don't really mind people noticing you're carrying or whatever, um, then it might be a good solution to you. Or, you know, you're not wearing pants. <laughs> Right? You know, something goes bump in the night, you can throw your shoulder holster on and uh, basically be buck ass naked and still be armed. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Hello there. As you all know, the Patriots have raised the prices on everything to stimulate the war economy. This means that the cost of production has really gone up. If you feel like supporting the channel, Please like and subscribe, tell your friends, share the video, and if you want to be really good, click the link below for the Patreon.